know, we I feel like we used to pride ourselves here on Mackie and Judd being a, a great baseball talk show. We would talk baseball on a daily basis. I feel like we've talked baseball about twice since the trade deadline. <laughs> but but Pat here is on the show, and the and the Twins have three former players, managers going into their Twins Hall of Fame: Ron Gardenhier, Dan Gladden, and your guy. Cesar Tovar once Cesar. played all nine positions in a game for the Twins going in. Yeah, he did a lot more than that. Uh, you look up his uh, stats. Uh, my, I think my number one uh, stat on him is in 1967. They played a hundred and uh, they played. They had two ties that year. That was back when you didn't, you know, unless it was uh, unless the game was uh, was. Uh, decided you you they were just they went into the record book as ties 164 games that year he played 164 yeah. and uh, i think he started 157 and he came in the other seven so seventh and uh, mvp voting that year too and he what he's he started over a hundred games i think at six different positions in his wow. career something like that uh uh, second, short, third, all the outfield positions. And then, of course, he also, uh, in the one game, he caught, pitched, and played first. That game in, in 1968 that Calvin was nervous because the attendance was slipping because 67, <laughs> they had the great year. 68, they uh, fallen off. And so he decided to have a uh, have, a, have him play all uh, nine positions and the public didn't exactly go crazy for that. I think they drew 13,000. <laughs> and it, it, it is funny where uh, when you when you get to see uh, the expertise of the, you know, some of the comments that people are uh, uh, are coming up with and uh, a lot of people giving us the information that he was the second player to uh, play all nine positions and naming a variety of people who did it. But they're they're they give you a different first name. It was actually Bert Campanaris that uh, had had done it like a year before, two years before for Oakland. And uh, and uh, but yeah, he played. Uh, he could play any of the outfield positions, all the infield positions, and, and a leadoff hitter at that time. He didn't walk a lot. You know, he didn't walk. He'd have seven hundred played up he'd have 700 at bats you know 680 at bats but he get hit, he got hit with pitches uh he might still be the twins all-time leader and in, in hit by pitches he would he'd get hit 16 17 18 times a year because he, yeah, he, he, he got, he, he got plunked 17 times in 1968 yes yeah he would just take the ball and then he'd take it anywhere but his head and then he would uh then he'd show up then he'd show off his bruises after the game, and he weighed like 150 pounds. You know, he was a little skinny guy. He was five foot nine, maybe. Uh, but the, the funny thing is, his uh, nickname here was always Pepito, uh, and or Pepe. But in Venezuela, where he'd go back and play every game, you know, he'd play the whole winter league and get 225 at bats down there. <laughs> His nickname uh, was, uh, he had the balls of a burrow, was the, the nickname. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it, it had to do with the genitals of a burrow, was his nickname down there. Which was, which we, did, we didn't go with that one up here. but uh, didn't, make, didn't make it a print. Wow. Yeah, and a very interesting uh, family man, too. Uh, he had the family in Venezuela, where he had, where it was his home base. And then he had the gal that he lived with up here in the Twin Cities. I think they might have gotten married up here, too. And he had a daughter, Nancy Jones, who I talked to a couple of days ago. And her son is a, is a hotshot baseball player at Creighton and is going to be a prospect. He's going to be drafted. He's a left-handed hitter, hard-throwing pitcher. But unlike his grandpa, he's about six foot and 200 pounds and, and, a, and a full-size guy. But... Uh, uh, I, uh, Mike Shropshire, uh, who wrote the great book Seasons in Hell and uh, the Seasons in Hell, the, the, the probably one of the best baseball books ever. And with the, um, you know, in Texas, about covering the Rangers, he was a crazy, you know, he still is, he's still with us, but uh, somehow he's still with us because <laughs> he liked his chemicals. But, uh, but, uh, 
<laughs> I knew him well. But he said the rumor with them was that uh, Caesar had three families, but I, I don't know where the third one. I mean, if, if all of your families are in different countries, I think it's, yes. uh, I think it's good. It's, it's uh, yeah, it is. Uh, so I, uh, I had that promise. Uh, I didn't, I didn't have to promise, but I, I, we, we went light on that in today's count. Uh, we said that he had a non-traditional family. <laughs> I read the column and I was, and I was, like what the heck so <laughs> so did did the families know of the existence at what point uh, of the other family I, I i don't know i didn't really break it down but uh yeah, there was no facebook back in the 60s yeah. you didn't have no, to I worry know, about that's what i'm know. saying i'm just nancy, I'm... nancy told me that it had been arranged for her to fly to caracas as a i read know, that yeah 15 year old kid or something and she was going to come down and hang out with Caesar and, and the crew down there in uh, Bacaracas, but uh, they had one of their political upheavals and uh, that, that never came about. And he died, you know, in early his, in his early 50s, uh, pancreatic cancer. And went, and you, you heard he was sick, and two days later, you heard he was dead. He, mm. he died at uh, 50, 54. But uh, I didn't realize, uh, not that it has anything to do with pancreatic cancer, but uh, uh, loved his heaters, man. I guess he was, uh, you know, I didn't, I never covered him, obviously. It was, it was so, just, you know, very much, but uh, he uh, liked the cigarettes. So, but he it's was crazy. a great guys player, are just like, no doubt about it. But, just lighten up between innings. It's kind of a I, mean, I feel like Mark Grace was the last, like, yes. known smoking, like in the 90s, you know, guys had, mostly started to take care of their bodies but mark grace yeah. was still ripping darts yeah yeah right but it was uh you know i think that phillies club <laughs> you know the 93 one dykstra and those guys yeah. <laughs> and well, Nishio i guess nishioka nishioka smoked in the twins yeah. clubhouse not that yeah long that's that's true but it's uh it's it's uh yeah it's a it's a I miss it. I loved it in the. Uh, I, I used to love the hockey locker rooms after oh, the God. games. You go there. You know, <laughs> Dennis Savard. You Between know. periods, Whoa. Pat. Between periods, yeah, they'd yeah, go I, in there. He'd light up. Yeah. Ten cigarettes. Dennis Savard, I would, I would... the most nonstop fastest player in the league. <laughs> <laughs> Give me two more cigarettes. <laughs> I'd take the cigarette smell over any hockey player jock strap oh, yeah. any day of the week, though. Oh, any day of the God. week. Blend them together, though. The wet, yeah. sweaty yeah. hockey <laughs> Wet leather, wet leather the might be the worst smelling thing in the oh, history. I really sport. think that they've uh, that that's probably the greatest improvement in hockey. Wouldn't you say the uh, smell of the locker rooms? Yes, they, they, uh, they, it's gone now. They got, yeah. they got air going. Uh, I miss it. Yeah, got, I miss yeah, that foul oh, stench, Pat. It used, to be, uh, it used to be, especially when you'd have a run in the in the in the and it get hot in the summer. Whew. You know, now we never had one that went past May and uh, with the North Stars at the end of May. But I remember that. I remember that one with Pittsburgh. There was some hot days, and uh, and that locker room did not smell good. So, woof. Anyway, um, Caesar, I'm glad I uh, I held my breath and pouted and uh, screamed about getting Caesar in, so uh, we got him in. So who's the, so you so you Camilo Pasqual, check Caesar you know, Tovar, check the two big ones. I I think Al Worthington would be worthy, but it's not life and death. You know, he's uh, he's it. It might be because Al's in his nineties, but uh, uh, but uh, you know, those were the two big big oversights and there were players not near not as good as him going into the hall of fame and that uh that uh, that that bothered me glad he was uh it, it's interesting how glad he uh you know i i saw that our story today uh suggested that uh glad he might have made it as an announcer i i he made it as a player he was on the player ballot but uh, yeah he's he's been on the edge, but uh, I think when, as we, the body of work of both of them, he should be in Hall of Fame. You know, there, there should the World be, Series. there should be room for a guy like that. But you know, it, it's kind of interesting too, like Ron Gardenhire getting in, and we, you know, you see Terry Ryan popping around the press box, and Paul Molitor still goes and sits oh, yeah. in the Legends Club and stuff like. The twins Watch have an amazing way of of not torching the bridges of people that they fire. I it guess. is, isn't it amazing? I mean, Molitor was there for the Buxton, you know, yeah. when they signed Buxton. Molly was there, and uh, you know, it's uh, 
uh, and, and other functions he shows up at. And he actually was going to make some trips for him last year to the minor league complexes, but because of COVID, I don't think he did. But yeah. uh, if this thing ever gets over, he's probably going to go back and hit the road once in a while and, you know, show some guy how to lead off first base and uh, maybe yeah. tell him, maybe give him his opinion on whether they can play or not. TK is kind of the guy that phased himself out. He did it on his own terms. He just doesn't feel like uh, these guys are really that interested in what he has to offer. So, you know, he doesn't want to go down and hit ground balls in spring training and then just be the everybody. Oh, hey, that's that old guy that used to <laughs> manage the twins. So, how, how's he, he? How's he doing? He's had kind of a rough couple years uh, i have not seen him uh i did that piece uh, on him uh before his son's memorial service i haven't seen him since but uh and he's had he's had a few health problems but nothing terribly serious i, th- I think he's doing what he does man he's uh you know played a lot of golf in the summer and i don't know what he does and i don't think he builds shelves and stuff like that so i don't know what he does in the winter i don't think he's a handyman so i i don't know what he does in the winter he doesn't gamble lay on the horses like he used to though i know that so, oh really yeah yeah i think he just didn't I think he was investing more time in it than it was worth it was just, he wanted a profit you know if he's gonna right. spend his time he's a He's a different guy, but it is a uh, it is amazing how they came in and they managed to get rid of guys, but maintain a maintain a link to them. You know, I think St. Peter has a lot to do with that. Yeah, yeah. I think I he think does a great Saint job. With Peter that. goes with the old one, and he's yes. he doesn't he doesn't like them to have enemies, you know, of of prominent people and. Cott's going to get us a, uh, a statue now, I would have Well, they're going to retire his number, but I think all of our Hall of Famers have statues, right? So he'll probably get a statue, too. I want him in the stretch with that great big, you know, that great, what he was, yeah, he was a great big guy with a, when he was even in a stretch and got up, you know, he later came through down here and threw quick, but when he used to throw from up here, man, he was tall when he threw, man. There's a lot of bronze going to have to be used for that statue. <laughs> yes. You can't have that little tiny Calvin statue. I wonder what they did with that little tiny. They took that little tiny Calvin statue down. I wonder. That's what that right. Was. Yeah. You could put it in the corner in your house. It was so small. We so canceled they, Calvin. I forgot about yes, that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, very, very quickly. And then forgot yeah. about it because nobody cared. You know what? They did Calvin a favor by doing that because somebody would have came and tipped it over, yeah. you know, during the unrest. Don't you think? Yeah, I think so. I think somebody that, that they were looking for places to go and I mean, and, Sid is the one that's sitting out there easily. To, I mean, it's on the corner of a main drag. You could tip that thing over. Surprised. I'm not saying that Sid needs to be canceled. Sid I'm would just saying, come like, back. It'd be easy to Sid tip would come over back and haunt the hell out of the person who dare tipped his statue hey. over. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, hey. He stiffs. Yeah. <laughs> so I, uh, I'm a Sid is, Sid is uh, you know, Sid's comments that might have been insensitive towards various genders and things like that they didn't become public so he's fine i think yeah. <laughs> yeah, i'll tell you so last night <clears throat> don't ask me many questions here but uh my wife and i were watching a couple episodes of the golden girls you know they're run there's like three channels now that betty white passed away that are trying to milk the golden oh, girls yeah, reruns right. for all they're worth right mm-hmm. so the, and the, yeah, that's like late 80s maybe early 90s yeah. those old those old gals made a couple jokes on this episode yes. that like 15 years ago no would have chance. been banned from TV. No <laughs> yeah. I never watched it, but I can imagine. I can. T- I know what you're telling me. It is. Uh, it is. I mean, what's the show with uh, good, uh, the good the the black family show? The, family the show Matters. Was, uh, Steve Urkel. No, no, no. Uh, good, good times was it? Good yeah, times, was another one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That one would. That one would. Try yeah, soap. Yeah. That one was show show soap. Good times was about two steps up from Amos and Andy, for God's sake. Yeah, they still, uh, but they ran it. uh, Still running in reruns. It was it it was amazing. What we uh, you 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 watch that stuff and you know and you go oh man alive should I even be watching this? I know it's like because the old (laughs) did I report this? The old old thing though was back then sexual stuff got you in trouble, but you could say anything you could be Archie racist Bunk- you Archie could be Bunker. sexist all in the family is the most sexist racist uh-huh. show of all time uh-huh. and it's considered a classic 
Yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it, it is, uh, it, you know what? It's also amazing that we watched these sitcoms that lasted basically 21 minutes. You know, 22 minutes. They had eight minutes of ads. Now, if you an ad comes on, you go, I'm not watching an ad. <laughs> I know, it's true. <laughs> My wife won't watch it. You know, if there's some of these movies, you can get them for free now, but they have ads, right? You, you know, I am yeah. BT or some of these, but yeah. they'll throw you maybe eight ads in the two hours, eight minutes worth of ads. She won't want, I'm not watching ads. <laughs> said, it's true. It yeah. makes the uh, it makes the world go round, dear. You gotta have ads, you know. So but. yeah, that's. What I think people are like we're kind of finding out. All right, how much will you pay to eliminate ads? But now, even like on yeah. the paid the paid platforms, they still sneak ads in. So you now you're getting hit yeah. twice. So uh, guys, uh, I look at the GM list, and but what, what, we don't know. I mean, yeah, any it, it's Total impossible to form an opinion. These are just. Eight names. These yes. are just eight names. There's Scrypack or whatever. Who Spytech. John Spytech. Yeah. Who, you know, Scrypack's the Hill Murray guy. You know, if, if, yeah, Scrypack's a hockey coach. Yeah. Uh, but it might as well be him. You know, these are all eight names of nobodies. Yeah. And, and you know, Ron Wolf's son, I might get excited about that, but they tell me he's one of the most bland human beings that ever lived. You know? I think we should hire Ron Wolf's son just to keep the nepotism tradition alive in yes, this franchise. That's true. And Let's then we'll it. say, Ron Wolf's helping him out. This is great. Yeah, he's uh, mentoring yeah. him. It's great. He's helping him draft. Ron Wolf <laughs> he's was in the great. Headset. Ron Wolf is oh, my role model for a for a general manager, though, but this kid isn't like that because he got beat out by Gutekunst, for goodness sakes, yeah. in Green Bay. But uh, Ron Wolf is. I like the Ron Wolf style of GM who said, here's your players, win. You know. Pat, Pat I got made. I got one word though, and you're not going to appreciate it. Inclusive. That's what we're looking for. Inclusive. We're looking for inclusive. Oh, no, 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 collaboration. Right? Collaboration and inclusive. Hey, we want everyone have, to have a say. In addition to Falvey saying it every two sentences there until we cured him by ridiculing him about it. Uh didn't didn't wasn't Gerson a collaborator on that first day? He was. Much. He was there very we much about. He, he, he might have collaborated a little too much. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He took it to an extreme. What's your opinion? <laughs> he took it to an extreme. Lunch or dinner or both? <laughs> but he was that first day. That was like the key buzzword to yeah. for him to yeah, right? those, collaborate. Family those four kids ran, ran up. Daddy, daddy. Yeah. Hey, sometimes I'm, I'm, you. Uh, sometimes it turns out that. That stuff is just just words that they feel like they should say, don't you think? Yeah. And maybe in Gerson's case, and uh, but collaboration is. Uh, does that mean that they have to talk to the wolves when they want to do something? I, uh, well, I think I think also like so collaboration means like we're all going to kind of work. You know, we're going to get we're yes, going to work together and, and yes. come to a consensus. It's like as if that's never happened in the history of business, right? Yes. Like that yes. back in the '60s. It was one person making all the decisions Dom and Draper. telling everyone to do. It's like, Dom yeah, Draper. I mean, people, you know, colla the Vikings, people collaborated in the 60s and 70s, didn't they? The Vikings, oh, yeah. uh, since Jim Fix left, you know, until then he took over, what, in the late 90s. They had 25 years where it was full-on collaboration. That's the way they ran, you know, because you had Lynn and Hedrick were the general managers and they didn't know a football from a basketball so uh, well i'll say for the twins whoever uh, was in the collaboration room for their last round of free agent signings i think you can probably yeah re re reduce the number of those <laughs> yeah that's true yeah who, who do we get? what checker do we get dylan bundy right wasn't that the last you mean well, i mean like i mean like a year Happen, ago uh, happened the shoe the uh, shoe Hap was, great for the, Hap was great for the Cardinals. Of course he was. I, what, that, that's one of my favorite things, the shoe. The shoe. He can pitch horse bleep for two and a half months, and he's still getting run out there. But when he goes over and see, gives some quotes to Dean Spiros from the St. Paul paper, ripping the organization. Now he's, he's gone. in four minutes. <laughs> bad, does not get rid of you suggesting that uh they don't know what they're doing over there boom gone didn't have anything to do with it no. yep 
So nice to know they're sensitive too. <laughs> All right, Pat, we're going to let you get back to your uh, your mid morning nap here. I'm I'm going to try to avoid a nap till later today. But the number one uh, crone thing for me is. Mm-hmm. Damn, I'm tired all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Get the, I, well, took Hank, the te- I took the test yesterday again and still got it, though, damn it. So. Well, hang in there. Get I a couple know. naps in. The more we'll sleep. Catch you. We'll catch yeah. you on Monday. Excuse to sleep. I'm good. All right. Yeah. All right. See you, Pat. Yeah. See you, Pat. All right. That's uh, you got to embrace, with Royce here. embrace the naps, man. I did. I, I, I it was like a toddler. Naps. I was like a toddler when I yeah. had it a year ago. It was every three hours I had to take a nap. Yeah. Like, I just had to. And I, I was so exhausted. But I told Dawn, I cannot do anything. I can work and sleep. That's it. It was the greatest excuse of all time. Do you guys, I mean, even when you're not sick with, with COVID, works. like, I, I enjoy a nap a couple days oh, a I, week. Oh, I, I napped yesterday. I napped probably twice a week. It's I like, probably napped twice a week. Nap is prob- highly underrated. I probably mm-hmm. go upstairs uh, three to four times per week once we get done and just take a little snooze. The, just go the, the key out. is... Key is forty five minutes tops because if you don't go into yeah. the over the hour, then you start, then you start getting really comfortable and it messes up your sleep pattern. A forty five minute cap of a nap yeah. is is the way to go. It's the way to be. Yeah. It's always very confusing too if you nap, you know, like this time of year too, and the the sun goes what down. Year like is it? Four forty five. Yeah. You, you wake up, it's dark. It's, you, you, know, you look at your you look mm-hmm. at your clock. It's like you six know. o'clock. You don't know if it's morning. You panic for ten seconds. Don't sweat. That's just me. I don't know the details. That's what I was gonna say. I don't care. I wake up. It's dark. Okay. I wake up. It's light. I don't care. <laughs> as long as I've done my work, I don't really care. Yeah. Because if I think of any <laughs> motto that describes Judd, it's don't <laughs> sweat the details. Don't, don't sweat worry. The details. Don't worry about anything. <laughs> no, you should worry about important things. What time you wake up? Not important. <laughs> you should worry about important things like Andrew Miller's presence in these interviews that yes. are taking uh, place we are, today. We're, we're going to talk about that. This is <laughs> this is taking a turn for the worse, as far as I can figure right now. All right, that's wrapping with Royce here. Scorn with YouTube channel, Mackie and Judd. Uh.